1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is accepted by the majority of biblical scholars. These two disciples, which the oral creed comes from, buried Jesus' dead body. What kind of evidence do you want? Give me contemporary evidence of Muhammad split in the moon. You said the oral creed passed on to Paul. Again, I put it forward to you. If you accept the science of philology, the only conclusion you can come to is that it was different from Paul. Whether it's earlier or later is a polemical argument. You said earlier to Mansul, how can you accept the Quran 600 years later? But you wouldn't accept a transfer that's from 900 years later. Same thing with Josephus, 11th and 13th century. Eusebius appeals to Plato to endorse lying and falsehood. However, Lycona, Professor Mike Lycona and Professor Gary Habermas have already refuted a misuse of this quotation in a lengthy discussion. Historically attested rumor. If you weren't a Muslim, you would 100% believe in the, his the historicity of Jesus Christ. The only reason why he's scared is the base. Please, 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 so, so you're, you're putting so your question, words in my mouth. So the, question, the only reason you eat potato because. So what is your reason then? For I just told you. Okay. No, you don't. Crucifixion yes. of Christ is a historically attested because rumor. Do you know what the word rumor means? Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Historicity is about rumor. probability. Do you know? I'm yes. not talking to you. No, no. Yeah, but you're not going to get nowhere. But he's twisting it because he's saying it's a rumor. Do you know what a rumor is? When people look at history, it's about the probability of something happening. The probability is 90%. It's not just the rumor. What? When you say evidence, Brother Muslim talking. Okay. 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 Let's define rumor. Rumor is a word that you understand and you understand, right? Yeah, yeah. For example, oh, yes, yes. it's a news that may not have real basis or anything in the but people spread it. People think it's true. Why did they spread it? So much why? We are talking about, we're talking about the reality. The reality. Okay, can I quote some evidence? No, I'm not interested in your evidence yet. What you I'm don't have evidence. So why, so you know, why are you debating? No, let's, let's, make point. They give him no, no, let's do a time thing then. Because I know what he's like. He doesn't Excuse let me answer. Me. That's what he's like in his videos. He goes on a tirade what and doesn't let the other person tell What did I just say earlier? I'm not interested in your evidence. And what was my last word? Yet. What does it mean yet? I don't know what you said. Yeah, I did say yet. What does it mean yet? Okay, stop playing games. Do you want to debate? No, yes or no? Stop. Do you want to debate? Yes or no? So, what I said... Do you want to debate? Okay, fine. See you later. No, he's not going. No, no, that's fine. I, I'm not interested in pe debating people who have no idea how to discuss. Do you want to do a two minute, two minute No, I'm, you're not a child. That's very fair. No, you're a child. I need two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, okay, three minutes. Listen. Okay, don't Come on, let him go, let him go, let him go. Unless we're doing it in a formal way. Discussion, discussion, discussion. Let him make his point. Yeah. Yeah. Give him a little bit of respect. I simply said, I simply Let's Let's go slowly. Let him finish. Go. Crucifixion. Is that well attested historically? But it's a rumour. I don't have a problem with rumours. Well being well attested. That's all. The moment you say it's a fact, there's a whole load of evidence that you need to bring. Yeah. Do you have any contemporary evidence? Let me ask you very clearly. Any contemporary evidence that we have eyewitnesses saying, I saw it, and their writing is there preserved contemporaneously? We have the contemporary writings of the people who saw it, yes. Do you want me to quote the evidence? Let, okay, me, let me quote explain the evidence. One yeah. second. Give him 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, give him the evidence. Seconds. No, he's going to give the evidence. No, what, what, what was my demand in terms of evidence? Contemporary evidence. What was my demand in terms of evidence? Contemporary evidence. Can I, can, can I say some? Contemporary yeah. what evidence. Contemporary yeah? evidence. Okay, name some contemporary evidence. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, according to the majority of biblical scholars, come within the first 12 months, even according to the likes of Professor Bart Ehrman, come within the 12 months of Jesus um, going away. And according to these, these same scholars, uh, this was not an oral creed which the Apostle Paul himself took upon, but rather someone himself gave it to him. And this is clear when Paul says in Galatians chapter 118, that I was acquainted with the knowledge by Peter who was Jesus' closest disciples. And according to these scholars, the oral creed originates from Peter and James. Peter and James were two of the closest disciples of Jesus. 
that buried his dead body in the ground. What more evidence do you want? Did you answer? Have you finished your answer? No, I'm not finished yet. And like I said, does he apply to the same standard to other points of history? So for example, was uh, Pontius Pilate the governor of Judea? Or these other first century, uh, he doesn't. The reason why he doesn't believe in the historicity of the crucifixion is based on a book 600 years after where a man who was possessed by the demon, which is what I believe, told him this. Was it necessary to bring this caveat, a man who's possessed by the demon, what emotional response are you trying to entice? This is not a civilized behavior. If you want to discuss crucifixion, don't bring, oh, he was possessed by whatever. Shame on you. Now, to answer your points, I asked contemporary evidence. So you were saying Corinthians. And you are suggesting to me Corinthians was written by Paul, if I'm not mistaken. And Paul didn't actually witness it himself. So he wasn't a contemporary first-hand witness, he got it from Peter and James. Sorry, that doesn't count as contemporary first-hand. So you don't accept I mean, the testimony of Jesus. You're not two listening. I have not finished. I have not finished. Let, let him finish and then you say. Otherwise we're not going to get You have no first-hand witness of anyone saying, I saw it and they've written it. You have Paul saying, oh, I got it from X, Y, Z. They have witnessed the crucifixion. That, to me, is not a direct evidence. Right? This is a crucial matter because your whole religion, correct me if I'm not mistaken, your whole religion revolves around the death and crucifixion of Christ. That means the standard of evidence needs to be very, very high. What you're bringing, instead of saying, this is the writing of Peter, who witnessed crucifixion, this is the writing of James, who witnessed crucifixion, you're giving me Paul, who didn't even meet Jesus in his lifetime. He's a self appointed, self declared individual who says i have received revelation from christ we don't we don't consider people who haven't even seen christ and someone says i know everything christ said christ gave me all these things to me so so what you have what you have is not a first hand evidence you have second third evidence do you have anything first hand if to provide I'm offering you again the chance to an opportunity. Okay. Anything first time. Okay. <laughs> okay. I quoted an oral creed that was passed on from the disciples of Jesus, then which the Apostle Paul recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which is accepted by the majority of biblical scholars. These two disciples, which the oral creed comes from, buried Jesus' dead body. What kind of evidence do you want? Give me contemporary evidence of Muhammad's split in the moon. Same so, son. So, so, <laughs> yeah, but that's so, another issue. So, no, no, no. So now well, you're bringing in another issue. No, no, no. We are debating the question. If you apply that now, same criteria to the life of Mahatma, yeah, we're not debating. No, no, no. I'm saying you're not debating. We're not talking about the double standard. See you later, people. Shush, shush. You're not heckling. We're not talking about the prophet now. We're talking about now. So now, as you've realised, he's saying. What did he say? He's saying this was an oral creed transmitted to Paul. That's the summary. From my witnesses. Right? Thank you. From my witnesses. Yes, yes. From, my, from, 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 from my witnesses. Yeah, yeah. So my point is, crucifixion is a very well-attested historical rumor. That's my stance. I don't have a problem being well-attested rumor, but it's not the reality. What you are saying, you have evidence for it. So what, where is the contemporary first-hand evidence? Instead you're saying it's a creedal, oral creed passed on. Now, when you have an oral creed passing on, we're talking about transmission. When something is transmitted from one individual to the other, you need to connect that they met each other, for example, yeah. they've heard each other from, and also the person that is being transmitted to. Peter transmits to Paul. Is Paul trustworthy? Did he have a good memory? Was he honest? Was he a man of integrity? These needs to be established, first of all, because Paul is hearing from them through oral transmission. Yeah? Okay. My four questions. Was Stick to question, one question. Stick, Stick to one, to one, one question. One question, which is part A, B, and C. The one question. Okay. Paul's integrity, right? Was Paul Trust one me. with a good memory? So he recollects exactly what was told to him, transmitted to him. Was he an honest individual? Did he ever lie? Did he never lie or deceive? Okay. And was he man of a character, good character? Before you say, I take Paul's testimony, we need to test him whether he's reliable and trustworthy. So provide all this evidence before you move on to the next thing. Yes. So nothing to do with the Quran now. Only stick to the question. Afraid, afraid, please. Yes. 
Uh, so, <laughs> so Galatians chapter one, verse eighteen, Paul says that he went and stayed with Cephas, and the word there he uses is historisteri, which means to be acquainted with knowledge. It is a historical fact which all biblical scholars affirm that the disciples of Jesus literally, which your Quran, by the way, calls Muslims, I don't know how, literally believed in Jesus' crucifixion. So we have the testimony of the disciples of Jesus. We also have Mark's Gospel. Mark's Gospel is the memoirs of the Apostle Peter, who recited and then his amanuensis Peter wrote this down. So Peter, the Gospel of Mark, which comes from Jesus' disciple Peter, talks about the crucifixion of Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Can you provide any historical evidence that Jesus was not crucified? Yes, the question yes, was. I will provide Can I ask you a question before all this happened? Because I was then you interrupted. Yeah, now, right. like, just, I'm debating. Ask him, ask him, ask him. He just, look, look, look. No, 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 no. Ask the no, 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 no. So you tell him. I am going to debate with all you. Can I talk to you? You can debate. Look, you can discuss with each other. We can discuss with each other. I'll be happy for you to discuss with each other. But the one question I asked, um, enough of the introduction. I'm giving you a chance again. Can you answer the question that I asked? Then we move on. Brother, I just have. What, what, I gave what, you the what, contemporary what is, evidence. Okay, what the is the question I asked? Can you remind him about Paul? Basically, the reliability of Paul. The reliability of Paul. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The real reliability. Of Paul. That he has a good memory. He was an honest man. Never lies. Never deceives. He's a good character. Yeah, and okay. man of integrity. If we're going to take Paul seriously. Yes, thank you. But we do need a running really kind of No, sure. Huh? I well, think so. We do. We do. It helps. It helps. It helps. Okay. We have excellent church tradition that the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter died as brothers in arms in Rome. And so Peter accepted Paul as a legitimate disciple of Jesus. So Peter, who was a disciple of Jesus, accepted Paul as a man of good honor, as a man of good integrity. Why should we doubt him? <laughs> And if we pay into the same standards, the main narrator in your Quran, the Hafs Quran, is a guy called Hafs bin Sulaiman. According to your own Islamic scholars, Hafs bin so Sulaiman was a liar and a thief yeah. who fabricated things about, against the Messenger of Allah. And Muhammad himself, the Prophet of Allah, also fabricated things against Allah yes. by saying about the three goddesses. What's your name, by the way? Don't Ruslan. change the subject. Ruslan. Sorry to stop you there. Um, I I'm just you, holding you to your own standard. No, no, look, it's not about standard. First of all, when you talk about like compared to Islamic traditions and histories, without having knowledge of these, obviously, clearly, it's can you just heard something from someone? No, no, your Islamic. Listen, listen, you're regurgitating out. I am simply asking you to stick to the topic, which obviously clearly you are. Every opportunity that you're responding, you, you, I'm just applying you. Excuse me, Ruslan, 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 you're all the same. Speak as Corona, you're all the same. You have to somehow insult the Prophet, insult Islam, and mockery, and so on and so forth. Now that's become your trend of your caliph. Ruslan, Ruslan, God, Ruslan, I'm talking. Yeah, so what's wrong with that? Ruslan, I'm talking. So it's become your trademark here, right? Your trademark. So maybe that's how you will be known in the future. This is how Christians are in the behavior. You know, the only thing that you need to change is this, you know, the approach that you're using. So I asked you about Paul's integrity, then I'm going to move over to Ijaz because Ijaz nodded in his head when you said... But I was talking to you. Listen, listen. Hang on, hang on. You can ask him Are you not personal? Questions. You're very intelligent. Uh, I'm talking about knowledge. I'm talking about intelligence. Don't you realize? But are you not a knowledgeable excuse me, man? Excuse me. I'm saying on this topic, I am saying speak to someone who knows. But the question I asked you about Paul's reliability, you are saying they died together with either Peter and Paul or something like this. That No, I said... Do you have anything to corroborate, testify that he was a man possessor of good memory? Obviously, you haven't got anything given me so far yet. I've asked this question so many times. Good memory. Not being dishonest, always being honest and of good character and integrity. You haven't given me anything. Because we know the contrary. When Paul says, to a Jew, I'm a Jew. To a gentle That's not what it means. Hang, hang on, hang That's on. not what it means. Paul said we do not use deceptive and mean, a true Christian would never use it. That's what Paul said. Look, when he this, says to a Jew, I'm a Jew, to a low person who's a mighty man, low person, and so on and so forth, it's very clear what it means. You will twist it away from its rightful context. So, where is your character witness for Paul? Once you answer that, I am happily handing over to Ijaz, who's knowledgeable in the subject, 
and you can discuss because he said he but doesn't I agree was, with you what you just said. I was said. initially talking with you, now you're handing it over. Initially I wanted to and talk to I don't to want to debate with you with all due respect for my own reasons. I'll tell you why if no, the audience wants to hear. You can say it all okay. as well, but I know the stuff is very well and what you said was incorrect. Absolutely. But the thing is, you say it's incorrect, but for example, I'll give you he, wait, made, wait, wait, wait. he made the video. You can Go on, no. No. Why do you say it's incorrect? We should let, no. Why do you say he it's made a video that was published on his channel, EF Dawa, called something the textual transmission of the New Testament or something like that, part one. And this video was refused, was um, analyzed by a Christian apologist by the name of Keith Thompson. Ijaz Ahmed in that talk said, and I quote, he was trying to discredit Petrine authorship of the epistles. And he said, we have a New Testament scholar called Professor Marcus Bockmuel who is a conservative scholar and he used those words as if this is a guy who's a conservative scholar not a liberal scholar and comes to the conclusions that the two epistles weren't written by Peter Keith Thompson actually emailed Professor Mark, Marcus Bockmuel and asked him have you ever identified as a conservative scholar he says no I would never identify as a conservative so with all due respect and this is just one out of a plethora of lies which you used in that so that's why I don't feel comfortable with you because one second I know you're very knowledgeable but the problem with your knowledge you can twist things and I've only been studying this yeah. for a limited yeah. amount of time <laughs> subhanallah he says he will not debate me because I'm a liar and I'm a liar because I described a man as conservative and he wasn't if that's the greatest lie you can give then I'm a saint it's still a lie it's, a it's still it's a, a lie it's still a lie it's still a lie substantive so give me something more substantive but your substantive. argument is Paul wasn't untrustworthy so if you pre proven to be untrustworthy. He has the right to then not yeah, engage with your, your, your uh, comments. My friend, my friend. Yeah, but that's one small No, no, thing it doesn't matter how small it is. Small he thing. wouldn't be... He's making a point. We <laughs> have concerns. If, 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 if you have... If you have... If you have... If you have... Let me speak. Let me speak. So, hold on. I can answer that accusation very easily. Wallahi! I got that book recommendation from a New Testament scholar who is a conservative from the New Orleans Again, I don't even believe you. Are you saying shut up to him? No, no, no. Don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. It's very simple. Look, he's calling me a liar. So let me correct you. Let me correct you. So I got it from a scholar, New Testament scholar, published by Brill on the New Testament from the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary. He recommended that book to me. And, he and says this, he's a let me finish. Let me, let me, dude, come on, right? And in that uh, message he sent to me, he described Marcus Buckmuel as a conservative scholar, and he himself was a conservative scholar. So I trusted a Christian and I was wrong. I will not make that mistake again. Now you know. said... You what are the other things that right, So said. what are the other... Hold on, no. You said that's a prophoria. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Something more substantive. No, hold on, hold on. I'll make this easy for you. You just made claims about the New Testament, its transmission, about Mark, Matthew, Peter, Paul. Sir, I call you a liar for what you have said, because I can prove you wrong publicly with evidence in front of you. So are you here to defend what you've just said, or are you a coward and you will it's very simple. No. I put the proposition to you. I'll defend what I said. Let's defend it. Make your claim again. Make it again. I've already said no, make it made point it about by three times. Make it point make by point. Make it so we will all, all listen. Yeah, yeah, enjoy yeah. Let's talk. make a circle. circle. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be more. Circle yeah. of friendship. Let's all hug and kiss. Right. Our tune's gone. Oh. Oh. You're safe now. Uh, uh, Come on. Right. <laughs> Nicely. Yeah. Right. So make, make the first point that you made earlier. I want us to go point by point because I'm not going to do motion right now, like we do all the time. Nicely. Make one point, I'll shut up, I will shut up, and you can tell me to shut up. Speak for two minutes, make your point, we'll time it. Can nice. someone time it? Yeah, I can time it. Yeah. Right. Humility, sorry, very fast. No, no, we need time. Because this Just on the crucifixion. Anything you want. Uh, Anything but you, want. you were speaking about crucifixion, so I would rather address the point you were there and go to a second one, just to be fair to you, because you didn't insist upon it. Can you time it? You can time it. You can time it as well. Uh, Time yeah. Thank you. Okay. Who's going to start first? Who's going to start? Don't worry, don't worry. You're not biased. Don't worry. It's a good man. Bro, shut up. Yeah, I know you're in it, bro. I know you're in it. Just back it up a little bit so we got a bit more. Open up, open up a bit more, boys. Yeah, yeah. Not too much because if you use bloody base water, it would be over there. Do you have a drink? Yeah. Okay, who's going to start? Oh, my phone. One minute or two minutes? Two minutes. Two minutes, two minutes? Three minutes, you mean? It's my phone. Saudi Arabian.
Messi now to share the footage. Are we ready? Quite you. Fake news, Messi now. Are we ready? Are we ready? Is there a new debate? What's going on? You're going to start first. Okay. Okay. Who is it? You're going to start. No one told me. Yeah, I'm going to start. Go! So, what I was going to say, first of all, so the crucifixion of Jesus is the most well established fact of ancient antiquity as stated by 99.9% I can't even think of a person historian that says the crucifixion of Jesus isn't a fact and the only people that do say it's a fact is people who believe that, that Jesus never existed and people who say that Jesus never existed, they're a fringe minority of a minority which the mainstream doesn't take uh, seriously. My point is that the disciples of Jesus Christ, who, which your Quran calls Muslims, believed and buried Jesus' dead body in the tomb. So we have attestation by the disciples of Jesus, which your Quran calls good Muslims, that somehow preserved the message of Jesus, which they actually didn't. That's evidence. Evidence number two, we have a parable which even liberal scholars of the Jesus seminar believe is a historical thing which the Jesus of Nazareth actually quoted. That's the parable of the vineyard where Jesus says that he will be killed. So Jesus is prophesying his own death. So we have Jesus prophesying his own death. We have the attestation of Jesus' disciples. We have the attestation of Roman uh, historians, of Jewish historians, of Jesus' enemies. Tacitus, Tacitus hated Christians. If he wanted to, he could have shut these pesky Christians up because, Jesus, because Christians in the first century were saying, look, Jesus died for our sins. Tacitus hated Christians. And if he wanted to, he could have said, no, this is actually a lie. But he never says anything because he knew as a historian who did his proper historical work that the disciple, that the death of Jesus is 100% true within a historical context. No, it's for his face. So the only reason why you reject this is based on a book written 600 years after that time by a man who was, <laughs> by his own admission, was under a black magic curse which gave him sexual delusions of him having sex with the imaginary woman. <laughs> this is the reason why you reject the crucifixion, because of what that man said. Okay. I got it. I got it. Stop, yeah. Go, go, you go. Right, so the question was simple. I asked him to make his point and he gave us three evidences historically for the crucifixion. The first he gave was testimony from the disciples. You have no testimony from the disciples. Nothing extant to the first, second or third century CE. Let me make this point very easily. He claimed that Mark was the scribe of Peter. Who does he get this from? He gets this from Papias and Papias, if you know what I'm saying. But Papias also says that Mark was written out of order. You read Mark today, which is the gospel that's out of order? Not the gospel of John? So if your earliest witness is unreliable, then you've proven that he's not trustworthy. Secondly, and I'll mention this point as well, Eusebius in the fourth century says that Papias was confused and got it wrong. So I'm not making that claim. I am not the unreliable one. Eusebius is attesting to Papias being wrong, so you appeal to that early tradition as false. Secondly, you appeal to the vineyard statement, which is an early or the same um, uh, creed statement, right? We know that's false, let me explain why. That understanding is based on what we call liberal scholarship. Jewish historians don't matter, Tacitus 9th century, Josephus 11th and 13th, just read the manuscripts and you'll see yourself. First of all, this is absolutely ridiculous. He's conflating when the manuscripts come from to when they actually wrote it. Yes, we may have manuscripts of Tacitus in the 9th century, but that doesn't mean it wasn't written in the 1st century AD. And this is what you're confusing. All biblical historians on the planet today believe all four of the Gospels were written between 30 to 60 years after the time of Jesus. And according to scholars like Professor Richard Balcom, the Marx Gospel was based on Peter's testimony. Peter was a disciple of Jesus. The book of Galatians, which no historian, on, well, not that I know of, even Bart Ehrman accepts, Mark, Galatians chapter 1 verse 18 is an authentic passage of Paul. And Paul is saying that he met the disciples of Jesus that acquainted with him knowledge and told them that Jesus was crucified. So the, the disciples believed in Jesus' literal crucifixion. 
The only people who denied Jesus' crucifixion in the first century AD was someone who called the Gnostics. The Gnostics believed that Jesus couldn't die because he didn't have a physical body, so you can't kill something that's not physical. Jesus couldn't eat, Jesus couldn't sleep, and these are the people that believe that Jesus didn't die. But apart from that, the mainstream believe that Jesus did die on the cross. The parable of the vineyard, again, it's an interesting passage, and even liberal scholars say this is something which Jesus actually said. Um, also, we have Papias of Heropolis, which he quoted. Why should we doubt any... Please bring me your thoughts where Papias lied or something, I don't know what you're on about, but Papias met John the Elder, who knew the disciples of Jesus. So we have a chain of transmission from Papias that goes to Jesus' disciples. We also have the testimony of um, Polycarp, who knew John. We also know the testimony of Ignatius of Antioch, both Ignatius of Antioch and Polycarp were students of the Apostle John and they both believe in Jesus' crucifixion. Are you ready? Yeah, you may begin. Go. So his first point was Galatians 1, 18 is authentic. Again, I bring you back to, I'm not asking what's the conclusions of others, right? Because if we were just to adopt the conclusions of others and the earth is flat and the sun is inside the dome, I'm not going to do that, right? What is upon us is that we must judge the evidence that leads to the conclusions. We are not a people just to take conclusions. So I'm putting it towards you. The philologists say because the text is different from the normal Pauline style of writing, it means that it's from a different author. So you have to make a con which, concession with which philologists. philologists. No, which text? You said Galatians 1.18 and the other one that you mentioned as well with the creed. I'll get to the vineyard creed, right? So I mean, I'm putting it forward to you. If you're going to accept the conclusions of the philologists... Padre's calling you. Right. Jesus. If you're going to accept the conclusions of the philologists, <laughs> then you must accept the presumption of the science, which is that the New Testament books weren't written by one author, but by multiple anonymous editors. So if you're going to appeal to that, then you need to follow through yeah. on your argument. Secondly, you said I conflated the date of the extant manuscript to the original authorship, referring to Tacitus and Josephus. No, I didn't expand my argument fully, but it, it's simple. You can't appeal to it. I never said it wasn't a first century work, but I'm saying to you the version that exists today is from nine. 900 years later. You said earlier to Mansul, how can you accept the Quran 600 years later? But you wouldn't accept jo uh, Tassadus from 900 years later. Same thing with Josephus, 11th and 13th century. You said that, uh, what was it? Uh, Tassadus would have written things against the Christians. We don't know what you originally transmitted. Yeah, you don't know what you originally transmitted. So textual criticism needs to be done to that. And in any case, the end conclusion will be an authorial proof of the Tassadus. Lastly, you said uh, Polycarp was a student of John. How we know this is false is that Polycarp never once quotes the Gospel of John and he never says which John he met. He just said he met a John. It could be John the Presbyter, it could be John the Elder, John of Patmos. We don't actually know historically. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Now, two seconds just to look at some stuff. So he's making this sound like. Are you, are you getting... yep. oh, go, yeah, go, go, go. So he's go. making it sound like that because we have later manuscripts that we can't possibly know what the earlier ones is. According to actual textual critics like Professor Craig L. Blomberg, Blomberg, we can accurately reconstruct the entirety of the New Testament with a 99% accuracy. Also, in a past few videos, he said that the title, the inscription of Matthew was added later on because in the second century there was no title, but further on there were titles saying Evangelion or Matteo. But that's not true. We have a flyleaf that has this that go, comes from the second century AD and so again that's not true we also have and he says um, just a martyr talks about the memoirs of the Apostle John just a martyr was a disciple of the Apostle John and he believed that in the crucifixion then what else my mouth is dying about John Polycarp and John which John Polycarp does identify as far as I, I think I'll have to get the quarter, but he does identify the John as a disciple, and I'm pretty sure of that. I just need um, to get some evidence. I looked at the one and, uh, one for the next one. I'm actually John, you didn't know yeah, Galatians John. chapter one. How long do I have? Thirty-five, 35 seconds. seconds. Okay. Professor Bart Ehrman, in his debate against um, Robert Price, a well-known mysticist, quoted Galatians chapter one eighteen, and he believed in its authenticity that the Apostle Paul knew the disciples of Jesus that knew the, um, the, the crucifixion of Jesus. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, according to biblical scholars, does not originate from the Apostle Paul because the language is different. Rather, this was an oral creed that was given to him and he's passing it down in paper form. And the two disciples that are named in that is Peter and James. So Peter and James believed in the crucifixion. Okay. Okay, you may begin. Right, so you made a mistake again. Simon, Dr. Simon Gatacool did read it, the inscription for the title of Matthew. We know that it's incorrect, you can't reduce it to the second century because it's paleographic dating. Dr. Brent Mungrian's magnificent new book, God's Library, goes into this into detail and it demonstrates that the early New Testament papyri cannot reliably be dated to the second century, but to the third and fourth. So it's very simple. He even does this with our P75 and Codex Vaticanus. So if you're going to quote Simon Gatacol, you need to be acquainted with your opposing opinions. I told this to Keith himself, and he, he was not able to understand it. He replied to me, there are actually other opinions. He doesn't know the competing opinions, so don't appeal to him. Secondly, you said that uh, Bart Ehrman accepts Galatians 1.18. I don't care what Bart Ehrman says or doesn't say. I care about the evidence. Bart Ehrman says Jesus is not God. Are you going to worship him God now? Are you going to stop worshiping Jesus as God because bad woman says otherwise? You said the oral creed passed down to Paul. I cannot put it forward to you if we accept the science of philology. The only conclusion you can come to is that it was different from Paul. Whether it's earlier or later is a polemical argument. You need to demonstrate that it's late, it's earlier, and you need to explain why. The scholars say that it's earlier only because the language in it is very primitive. But we know that not to be the case because there were, there were what we call anakaluta in the anakaluton in the New Testament, like Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. They have incomplete, primitive language, and the scholars agree that, you know what, it's incomplete. So if you're going to use the science of philology to bring arguments to conclusions, you need to understand the science first. Otherwise, you're just appealing to authorities that you don't understand. 20 seconds. Right. Um, you didn't get back to my point. So let me read for you what uh, Eusebius says. Uh, da, da, da. The same writer gives also other accounts which he says came to him through unwritten tradition, certain strange parables and teachings of the Saviour and some other mythical things. I don't say that. Um, you say this. No, Paul. You say this says about who? Where's it for pace? Can I just read that one second? Just don't check my pictures. It's a joke. You know what's good? You e e email him your questions, he emails you his answers, then you have your debate. No, no, no. I don't, I'll have to check that. Okay, I've not but, but, okay, but, okay. Um, do you want to respond to me? Do you remember the point I missed? Uh, go on, tell them quickly your points. Uh, who started first and who started? Who started? started. So does that mean you have to end? I could end, I would rather... So we'll leave it at there for now because I've got a bus to catch. Can I just give you one quote then? One quote. Can I just give you one quote? I just want to hear your response to it, right? Uh, it's on my website. Right. So guys, I'm reading from Eusebius, right? And he's writing in his words, the preparation for the Gospel Book 12, chapter 31. This is what he says. That it, will, that it will be necessary sometimes to use falsehood as a remedy for the benefit of those who require such a mode of treatment. And when he goes on to about the Gospels, he says, but even if the case were not such, as our argument has not proved it to be, if a lawgiver who is to be of ever so little use could have ventured to tell any falsehood at all to the young for their good, um, is there any falsehood yeah. that he could have told more beneficial than this, referring to the Gospel, and better able to make them do or everything that is just not by compulsion but willingly. So the Greek, according to this, he's saying that it's okay to have useful lies. Who, who says? Eusebius. Eusebius. Eusebius says okay. To have, uh, Eusebius uh, says okay. For the preparation of the Gospels, the title of that book, sorry, the title of the chapter is that it will be necessary sometimes to use falsehood as a remedy for the benefit okay. of those who require. Can you respond? Okay, Can you respond, respond just to that, to that so I'll just read because he made the same point and he Thompson addresses. Let me read this. This is from his article. Ahmed's final argument is a distortion of the words of the 3rd and 4th century historian Eusebius. 
Ahmed claims Eusebius appeals to Plato to endorse lying and falsehood. However, Lycona, Professor Mike Lycona and Professor Gary Habermas have already refuted a misuse of this quotation in a lengthy discussion. Eusebius merely affirmed it is okay for God to use anthropomorphic language if it is result in the benefit of humanity. While the Quran uses anthropomorphic language for Allah as well, does Allah really believe has little hands and a little throne encompassing the heavens and the earth? Or will Ahmed affirm Quran chapter 42 verse 11 which says nothing is truly like Allah and therefore take this as symbolically? He needs to be consistent and condemn the Quran if he's going to condemn Eusebius and the Bible for permitting anthropomorphic language. If you carefully read the Eusebius quote in question, Plato did, did, did not even encourage lying. Lycona and Habermas correctly summarized all he said was he believes he is still correct in his belief but even if his belief is still expedient. And all Eusebius said was the Hebrew writers had attributed human qualities to God to explain why we should worship other why we should not worship other gods and the reason behind this. Even in the very quote Ahmed cited, those are commended and truth, O stranger, is a noble and a... So basically when the Bible talks about God having wings, that in a sense it is a lie because God doesn't have wings, but it's a metaphorical wing. And this is what Eusebius is talking about. I actually have to go. I'm you got 30 seconds. You got 30 seconds. Right? So I knew about that quote. And let me tell you how uh, Gary Habermas and Michael Lacona translate that term. This is quote for quote. It may be helpful to look at the Greek employed. The word used by Plato is pseudos, which typically means a lie or imitation. Let me go on. He says, however, Plato's context, so now this is Habermas and Lacona, and the, the passage may justify a nuance for the following reasons. One, Plato uses the term good lie, eliminating harmful intent. So it's still a lie, it's just a good one. And it renders the term as useful fiction instead of Yes, falsehood. useful fiction. So when let me give an Islamic example. When the Prophet Muhammad said Allah has two right hands, I believe that Muslims are intelligent people and they don't believe God has literally right hands. But he's using a useful lie, technically, that using a language device. And this is what the a Apostle, this is what Eusebius is talking about. Anyways, I have to go. Actually, genuinely, I have to go. So this is not about lying, about to deceive people, but it's about the anthropomorphic. 20 seconds. You made a mistake. The mistake is, hold on. The mistake is that it's not about describing God. It's about fiction within the Gospels that have nothing to do with the nature of God. It's useful to lie with the No, no, they can talk about just the anthropomorphic attributes of saying God has wings. Obviously God doesn't have wings, so in that sense it is a lie, but still just a metaphorical device actually. Right, so a language and device, I actually so, have to so go. a lie is a language device? In one sense, yes. That's what, that's what that's that's right. that is. Right. That's all good. Are they finished? Make a choice, we'll do a wrap up. We'll do a wrap up. Yeah. So basically, I just debated Ijaz Ahmed. He didn't give me a single source of evidence that says Jesus was not crucified. I gave him multiple independent attestations from different disciples of Jesus that the vast majority of biblical historians believe that he was, in fact, crucified, and his disciples believe that he was crucified. Anyways, thank you. God bless.